Finding the right weapon in Elden Ring is pretty important and while every weapon can work if you build around it, there are some weapons that are very powerful right out of the box. The best part is there are a couple you can get relatively early on, so if you have the required stats to wield them you can deal absurd amounts of damage to both regular enemies and bosses. And if you don't have the required stats we've got you covered too as we will also discuss an easy and accessible rune farm so you can quickly get the levels you need to wield these amazing items. So let's get right into it. So the first of these weapons you can get really early on if you want to but you have to defeat a boss in order to get it. I'm talking about the Bloodhound's Fang, an amazing curved great sword that requires both strength and dexterity to wield. But the investment in stats is totally worth it thanks to the bleed buildup it does and the amazing weapon art Bloodhound's Finesse. For if you don't know, bleed is a status effect that builds up on enemies if you hit them with a weapon that causes blood loss as you can see over here on the item card. As soon as the status is built up, your enemy will instantly lose a massive amount of health so really strong as it also works against bosses. So yeah, a curved greatsword with this effect is already great but then we still haven't talked about the amazing weapon art. Bloodhound's Finesse allows you to perform a backward somersault while slashing with your sword so an incredibly useful attack as it deals both damage and creates distance between you and your enemy. Which is of course really useful for if you need to heal or dodge an especially powerful attack. To make it even better though you can then follow up with a heavy attack so press the button immediately after you've landed from your backflip to follow up with Bloodhound Step. This second attack lets you vanish and then reappear next to the opponent with another Another heavy swing so it is a pretty brutal two hit combo. And once again the fact that you can create or close distance with this is really really good especially on a bit of a slower weapon like a greatsword. Now do keep in mind that this weapon like any weapon in the game has stat requirements you need to meet in order to use both the weapon and the weapon art properly. We will talk about a rune farm later in the video for if you need some levels but also keep in mind that you can sometimes meet a weapon's strength requirement while holding it in two hands. You can already see this when equipping the weapon as it will say unable to use this item effectively unless wielded in both hands instead of the regular unable to use this item effectively message. And if you don't know you can two hand any weapon by holding triangle or Y and then pressing either R1 or RB for your right hand weapon or L1 or LB for the left. Now to get the weapon though we need to go over here on the map close to the Bridge of Sacrifice and enter this Everjail. Everjails are basically just boss fights in a circular arena and in this one we find Bloodhound Dariwil. Now he can be pretty intimidating as he's a pretty aggressive boss but he isn't super tanky and I also found him to be pretty vulnerable to guard counters. So once you've learned his combos a bit, block by holding L1 or LB on the last hit instead of dodging, then follow up with a heavy attack to break his posture and deal massive damage with a follow up critical strike. And after the fight is done you have yourself an amazing greatsword with an even better weapon art to boot. And there's an even stronger weapon still but we will touch on that one in a bit of course remember to leave a like on the video if you liked it so far and subscribe to make sure you don't miss our next Elden Ring video. Now for our next weapon we're going on a little trip to a region called Liurna which is for most players probably the second region they visit as it's located right behind Goldrick's boss room. There is a way to get there earlier though and you will definitely want to as you can find one of the most amazing amazing weapons in the game here, the Sword of Night and Flame. Not only does this legendary weapon look incredibly cool, it also has one of the most insane weapon arts in the game on it, one that works great against both single targets and groups of enemies. So the way it works is by holding the weapon art button, so LT or L2, you enter the Night and Flame stance. Doing this won't cost you any FP, but while this stance is active, you can follow up with a light or heavy attack to trigger a special move. A light attack will trigger the Night Comet Sorcery, shooting a giant beam of energy towards a target, dealing high damage. The longer a target stays in the beam, the more damage it takes, plus it can pierce through enemies as well, so if you manage to line them up, it's pretty good for clearing groups too. But the real star of the show, at least when it comes to clearing groups, is the follow-up Heavy Attack. This will unleash a massive wall of flame towards the enemies which travels a decent distance and does massive damage. It works well against some of these roaming groups you sometimes come across in the open world as one swing can easily take out multiple targets. The best part is that both these attacks don't even cost that much FP, only a bit more than some regular spells like Magic Glint Blade so you're able to use them pretty often too. Like I mentioned we do need to go on a bit of a trip to reach this item but there are some great items along the way which we'll be showing you too so you can grab them if you want. We start our trip from the Stormhill Shack Grace Point and from there we want to head north until we find a broken bridge. We want to go all the way up to the edge because there is a path to the left we can jump down on. 
Just hug the cliff and sprint on horseback, nothing much here to bother you and if you keep going you will eventually reach a grace point. From here you can of course explore the region at your own pace but for the purposes of this video we want to head over here to the foot of the four belfries. From there we travel north along the road to find one of the giant convoys that roam around the world. Kill the enemies and loot the chest in the back to find the Carrion Knight's sword, a magical longsword that requires some intelligence to use. It has a pretty cool weapon art where you magically extend the blade for a giant slash but it's also pretty slow and therefore kind of hard to use. The main reason we want to pick this up is so we can dual wield it with the Sword of Night and Flame later on. After that we move on still following the road north until we reach the King's Realm Ruins. Here you have to get past an illusory wall so as soon as you reach this spot hit the wall with an attack and it should disappear. Behind it is a grace point and an NPC that we definitely want to talk to, e.g. the blacksmith. This gentle giant is not only a friendly NPC who can upgrade your weapons for you, he also sells somber smithing stones, which are used to upgrade unique weapons. And you might have already guessed it, but that amazing sword of night and flame is one of those unique weapons, so as soon as we get it, we can come back here to EG to upgrade it. So we hold back on our mount and travel to the main Caria Manor gate. Magical arrow barrages will start raining down on you when you get close, but I found that if you just stay off the main road, they will not come close enough to hit you. And now from here we want to very carefully make our way over to the next grace point in the area. And I do mean carefully as this area is home to some of the creepiest enemies I've come across so far. Like what do we even call these? Hand spiders? I'm going with hand spiders. Anyway, these guys like to set up traps for you. They are hanging from the walls. Some have dug themselves in so you can only see their fingertips sticking out of the ground. And if you get too close, they will grab you immediately. You can use a spirit summon here to make your life a bit easier. And by hugging the left wall and looking around to make sure you know where the hand spiders are hidden, you will eventually reach this building. It is guarded by one big hand spider and two smaller ones, but we can just run in and upstairs is the second grace point. And from that one, it's pretty much a straight shot to the weapon. Go outside and run along the catwalk, just ignore the enemies that spawn and then take a left at the first tower and a right at the second. After that you will spot a building to your left. Jump down on it from the catwalk and keep moving as we will need to jump on another building with a hole in the roof. Once you've reached that, take the ladder down into the hole and you will find a chest with the amazing sword of night and flame in it. And like we mentioned, if you have some spare runes, you can immediately go back to EG to upgrade it a few levels if you want. Also, if you picked up the carrion night sword earlier, you can now dual wield two long swords which both deal magic damage. In case you didn't know, if you equip two weapons of the same type, you can use a dual wield moveset by pressing the attack button on your left hand, so L1 or LB. I really enjoy running around with two swords. I mean, it looks cool and you deal tons of damage, but you do of course lose the defensive option of a shield, so it's definitely more of a risk reward playstyle. Now there is one big downside to this amazing sword of night and flame and that is the fact that it requires both 24 intelligence and 24 fate for it to work. Now my fate was very low when I got this so I went to farm some runes to get the levels I needed. And I'll touch on the method I used to farm these runes in a bit, it's very easy and you can do it early on without killing enemies. You can use the timestamps to skip ahead if you want but first there's another amazing item you can get early on that will give you life back on critical hits. And in order to get this item we want to go back to Limgrave and head for the Death Touched Catacombs which are over here on the map. Maybe you remember it from an earlier video as we also mentioned you can get the amazing Uchi Katana here but this time we're back with a vengeance as we want to kill the dungeon boss. Make your way through the dungeon and if you choose to fight of course remember to give the skeletons a little love tap while they're reforming just to make sure that they stay dead. You can also just run to the lever required to open the boss door if you want you need to go down into the catacombs so go right in the first room head down the stairs and then you can already see the lever in the distance. Pull it and the door to the boss will open. Now I didn't have too much trouble with this guy he's pretty agile but overwhelming him with the help of summons really did the trick for me i used the skeletal militiaman in this fight which we mentioned in our mistakes you don't want to make video go watch that one if you haven't already because there's some pretty cool tips in that one too but once you manage to defeat the boss he will drop the assassin's crimson dagger this talisman lets you restore health on critical hits which in elden ring mean a backstab or a frontal riposte after breaking enemy posture 
Now we already mentioned this in an earlier video too, but if you've been using the new jumping, charge heavy and guard deflect attacks a lot, you already know that breaking enemy posture regularly really improves your damage, as it sets the enemy up for a very powerful counter attack. But now, thanks to this talisman, every time you perform one of these powerful follow up attacks, you get healed as well. And it heals a pretty significant bit of your health, as you can see here. I'm at figure 15, so not super high, but even still, one repost restores a pretty decent part of my health bar. So this is a really useful item which makes sure that you can stay healed up without using your flask and you can get this one as well as soon as you enter the open world. Alright, now it's time to discuss that farm I mentioned earlier, which is all the way over here in Kaelin. But don't worry, we're going to make use of a teleporter that allows us to visit this specific region from the start of the game. If you've already found and visited Garank, you can start from the Bastille Sanctum, but if you didn't, you can find the teleporter I mentioned near the third church of Marika over here on the map. It can be difficult to spot as it's hidden in the water behind some bushes, but since it's glowing, it shouldn't be too hard for you to find. After using it, we're now way over here on the map and we want to head southeast to find a path down, which will lead us to the Lenny's Rice Grace Point on the map. And don't just ride down the road that leads to a giant bridge. It might seem like the obvious route here, but there's a not so friendly dragon there, so instead we're taking another path which is more to the east and leads down. You can easily find it if you go to the left of the bridge and you'll know you're in the right place if you start seeing these giant pieces of rubble. Just ignore the enemies on the road, there are also a lot of poison traps here, but you don't have to worry about them too much as we're heading for a grace point anyway and it's not that far. Once you've reached it, activate the grace point and we can start our farm. So what we want to do is jump on our mount and head down the path that leads under the giant bridge. Pretty soon, before you even reach the bridge, a giant ball will be spawned behind you in the middle of the road. It will be launched straight at you, so move to the side of the cliff, dodge it and watch it fall off. And if you do manage to get it to fall off, it should give you a little under 2000 runes. Move on further down the path until you pass this giant tree root, after which another ball will spawn, so we dodge that too and get another 1952 runes. Then we use the map to teleport back to Lene's Rise, rinse and repeat until you have all the runes you need. One tip is that I sometimes didn't get the runes for the first ball, but I found that if I stuck close to the edge and made sure that I actually watched it fall, made sure I got my runes most of the time. You can also make the farm a bit faster by using an item known as a gold pickled foul food. We'll leave a link to the Vextra Life page for this item so you can check where to find one, but having this item active raises your runes from 1952 to 2537 per ball. So it might take some time, but once you've farmed enough runes to properly wield that Sword of Night and Flame, you'll have a weapon that can pretty much carry you through the entire game. So have fun with this amazing weapon, remember to leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one, and if you want you can watch our previous video on some amazing items you can get very early in the game. Thanks everyone so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!